So you see the number every day right here on KSAT 12, the aquifer level. But what does that number really mean? And why is the Edwards aquifer so important and heavily regulated? Meteorologist Justin Horn and Sarah Spivey join us now to chat about a new episode of KSAT Explains all about the Edwards aquifer. Good morning again, guys. Hi, good Sarah. Morning. Good morning. Hi. Good. So happy to be here and talk about this important subject. Yeah, you bet. Good to have you here at uh, on the 9 o'clock show. So let's start with a basic question, especially for folks who are maybe new to to our metropolitan area or never really delved into this, what exactly is the Edwards Aquifer? So plain and simple, it's our largest source of drinking water yeah. in San Antonio. It is an underground system of groundwater, uh, porous limestone, the water fills up this limestone and we harvest it every day <laughs> at the J-17 well. Uh, yeah, that's why we report the number every yeah. day, it's, it is, uh, it's a big deal. And why is the aquifer regulated? Are we worried about that drying up? It's a good question, and we get that question a lot. Uh, is the aquifer gonna dry up? Are we gonna use all the water? And the answer is no. The, the reason the, the, the Edwards aquifer is regulated is because, uh, first off, it became very litigious in the 80s and 90s. People were, everybody wanted a piece of it, right? Everybody wanted some water. But also, we had to protect the endangered species. The federal government stepped in and said, you've gotta protect these endangered species, or we will. And so that's why we started watching the level of the aquifer very closely. And that right is there, that is the uh, poster child for the Edwards aquifer. That is the Texas blind salamander. Yeah. And there you can see they're actually in one of the springs there tagging where they can find any kind of salamanders there in the Comal, the Comal salamander in, in particular. The thing is the aquifer, we're not worried about it running out of water. It's got enough water right. in it to sustain people indefinitely right. but those salamanders they need a clear clean flowing stream of water you got to get that springs the springs flowing yeah in yeah. order to survive and for me justin that was the most enlightening part for me because i sure. grew up around san antonio i thought every time we saw the number on on tv right. it was because we were worried about the aquifer drying up yes mm -hmm. not not the case right we're we're the protection there of the endangered species is the the main issue and very quickly they the the term i heard a lot was canary in the coal mine so yeah. these salamanders really uh, tell us what the health of the aquifer is, and it's important to us that they stay healthy because then we know it's healthy for us. All makes sense to me. Yep. San Antonio yep. Metro, of course, growing very rapidly. We can continue to do so for decades to come. Is the Edwards Aquifer Authority, or EAA, concerned about water contamination, all that uh, current and upcoming development? Yes, they are, and, and they're watching this, especially over the recharge zone. How does development dictate that, and where does the pollution go? And so they're trying to be very thoughtful about how we go forward here with developing over the Edwards Aquifer and what the future looks like to make sure the water stays sustainable. And you know, one part we didn't really get into a lot here in this episode was Saw's role in all of this. And SAWS has diversified their water portfolio, as they call it. So we have the Vista Ridge Pipeline, we have desalination. They're not. Uh, just using the Edwards Aquifer like they used to. So that's that's part of it. Uh, but the future uh, is being watched very closely by the Edwards Aquifer, and they've got work ahead of them. Right, and you know, San Antonio is growing. San Antonio metro area is growing. But there are huge swaths of land that are being protected from future development simply to keep the aquifer clean, clear, and the springs flowing. Mm -hmm. And so it was just fascinating to be able to do this. You know, I kind of think of it like a Nat Geo package. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we we got to do our own yeah. little mini Nat Geo package. I'm hoping that classrooms may show this, you know, to teach kids about yeah. the aquifer. It was so cool. I got to nerd out and hold one of those Texas blind salamanders in my hands. And doing that, it really was so fragile. Creepy and, and wow. cute. Creepy cute. Creepy cute. Yes. Creepy cute. Yes. That is pretty cool. <laughs> you know, and for people, like, just a reminder, how can they watch? Right, so ksat.com slash explains. And then also, uh, Justin and I, any way you stream. So ksat.com, also there's ksat plus, which you can get on your Roku, Amazon, Fire Stick, all of those things. Yep. And we've also shared it to our social media sites too. Sure. Mm -hmm. If you follow us, there's, there should be a quick link there too. So it's about 20 minutes long, but it's a, it's, it's a good summary of the aquifer and everything you need to know. And can't thank enough the team behind ksat explains, yes. Valerie Gomez, our editor, all of our uh, photographers out there, Lexi, it was great. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Sarah Spivey, another guy, thank you very another much. Guy. <laughs> yeah, it's our very own Justin Horn. Yes. Thank you.